Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, my name is Jason Matthew. So this is the uh, part 5 video uh, in the series that we started uh, on understanding RF. Till now we covered a lot of things and one of them uh, is uh, AP uh, transmit power compared to the wireless point of, uh, client point of view. Then we talked about uh, regulatory domain or the TPC power settings and how this is going to impact your uh, RF on the other side. Then we talk about wireless performance or uh, the signal strength going to be changed, how it's going to be changed or impacted by the uh, height of the ceiling, uh, ceiling mounting APs. If your ceiling uh, height is increasing, how it's going to impact your RF, we covered that. We also covered how uh, this uh, mounting model will change the same AP behavior like internal antenna AP is getting ceiling mounted or wall mounted or floor mounted or uh, kept inside uh, some cabinet or below or table something like that so we covered that then uh, we covered uh, what are the different antenna types available for 3800 we covered that in this video we'll uh, we'll talk about how to do a channel planning and uh, how that is going to uh, behave in your network how, how that is going to serve the clients so for this video uh, setup is same uh, we have uh, 3800 ips let me open the ap settings so uh, we have 3800 i the internal antenna one uh, with 2.4 and 5 gigahertz and it's a ceiling mounting uh, mounted one then we have a power level set it as uh, 8 8 dBm for uh, 2.4 and level dBm for uh, 5 gigahertz. So th these are the settings across the entire uh, APs in this particular uh, floor plan. As you can see, we have uh, multiple access points here. I just want to showcase how to do the channel planning and uh, how to do that uh, mapping. So in simulated way, we will see how this one is behaving in the background and you can duplicate this one if you want to do it in the real network. Let's see what are the different uh, available options in 2.4 and uh, let's talk about it and let's understand that in a, a graphical uh, view here. Right now you can uh, see that I selected only 2.4 GHz here then uh, it's in signal strength view and we have uh, 67 uh, as, the, as the boundary. As you can see here we have around 9 access points. All the access points are actually uh, running on channel 1 for 2.4 and 36 on uh, so channel 1 here for 2.4 and 36 on uh, 5 GHz. So it's a basic I just added the uh, access points here. But you know, uh, this is not the way we are supposed to have the channel planning because we should not have any overlapping channels. When we talk about overlapping channels on 2.4, we know that there are uh, some limitations of number of channels available. It's not like our 5 gigahertz channels, right? So I'll just go to Akahu tool allows uh, channel planner option. So I'm going for a channel planner option so that I can show you uh, some of the options available that you can uh, use it in your network. The first thing I'm going to plan out only for 2.4 GHz. So this is uh, our automatic channel planning uh, tool, our capability available on Akahu. So as you can see here, we have channel 1, 2, 3 uh, till 14, but 14 is not enabled here, but we have up to uh, 13. And as you know, the standard model used in all the networks are 1611. Those are the three non-overlapping channels available on um, 2.4 but sometimes uh, you may need more than this one because you have a lot of high critical uh, applications or uh, appliances running on 2.4 and you need uh, more than three channels and you are ready to take some uh, level of uh, uh, risk in your channel planning like even you are getting some overlapping you are still okay to continue with that overlapping so in that scenario we have uh, so akahu provides four different options here first one is 1611 commonly used by everyone so you will have three channels completely non overlapping channels even though you have a one two three four so uh, you can see the entire list here you have all these channels but only three channels are non-overlapping. So this is like uh, 22 MHz channels in the background and one and two, uh, three are actually sharing the same uh, pattern. You, you, you can get a lot, uh, lot of pictures that actually shows that overlapping and all. So when you select 1611, no overlapping, they're completely fine. 
and the next option so the these are the uh, other options you can use it in the background if you are okay to use this one as per your regulatory domain you are uh, you are okay to use it you can you can select all these channels and you can use it the second option is like you can go for 1 4 8 and 11 there will be some overlapping between 1 and 4 and there will be overlapping for 4 with 1 and 8 then there will be overlap between 8 and 4 and 8 and 11 so there will be overlap but it's very minimal uh, so you can choose that option if you want more than 3 and you want to really concentrate on 2.4 you can even uh, think about that option you can also go for 1713 uh, this is also provides you uh, better uh, better non overlapping channels than this guy when you have 1611 no point in using this 1713 but in some kind of scenarios we will use this one to avoid interference between some other equipments using the 2.4 radio or something for an example you uh, you want to implement 2.4 gigahertz in your network and you already have some other devices functioning in your network and you want to avoid using some channels like 6 or uh, something like that uh, i'm just giving an example so in that case you can even think about this model then uh, this is the another uh, four channel option available uh, in your network and uh, these are the four available options that you can use it in uh, uh, 2.4 let's start with 1611 so i'm going to select 1611 for 2.4 then I'm going to create a plan. So when I create this plan, you can see that uh, these channels are configured based on that. As you can see here, this is, this guy is having 11, this guy is having six, this, this is again uh, 11, six, one, six, one, 11, one. So you can see that the overlapping between these two guys will come into picture because this is closer, uh, distance wise is same, but somehow, who try to arrange its level best to uh, get that non overlapping channels with three channel plan of 1611 we will do the same exercise with the other plan 14811 and now we can see uh, started with 414 uh, 11811 then uh, 414 so here you are getting a little bit more room because uh, uh, your number of channel availability is 4. 2.4 is not similar to uh, 5 GHz because in 5 GHz when you say 36 and uh, 40 those are actually non overlapping channels it never overlaps in 5 GHz but here it's not the same if it's very small manually you can do this if it's not small size then leave that to um, leave that to uh, your RRM uh, WLC Cisco WLC will uh, take care of that or whatever solution you are using you can you can use that and uh, take care of like you can leave that to the radio resource management tool the next available option is uh, you can statically uh, map the channels you can go uh, ap by ap and you can set it sometimes you will get a scenario that all the aps are actually going to work with one channel only because you have a client on the other side that actually functions only with one channel in that case uh, the channel scanning and all those things you want to avoid that kind of stuff uh, you can you can use uh, static mapping and uh, when you are doing channel mapping uh, you have an option here right disable unnecessary uh, 2.4 gigahertz radio so when you are planning out uh, 2.4 radio and if you are thinking that you, uh, you can actually switch off some of the radios because it's anyway it's overlapping no point in adding more IPs and getting more interference right so this option can be utilized so I'm going to enable uh, a static mapping with only one channel now you can see that all these access points are actually functioning with uh, channel 1. Now let's go into uh, manual settings of the AP, what is going to happen uh, in the background. So you are going to, um, so let's see uh, see the configuration side. The um, When you go to the AP configuration side, you have an option to enable 11 and right? So previously you were seeing 11N uh, is used in the background and uh, 11N is showing uh, channel 1 channel plan and you have an option to enable 40 megahertz here. So when you have 11N you can use 40 megahertz. When you select 40 megahertz you can see this mapping is happening here right. 1, 2, 5 is already used for this 40 megahertz channel. You are actually using channel bonding and you are actually channel bonding uh, till 1 to 5. So you can go for 6, 
uh, when you go to 6 it will take from 2 to 6 then when you go for 9 it will it will take uh, 5 to 9 so this is how the channel planning happens in the background so this is how the graphical view of Akahu shows that uh, mapping uh, with 40 megahertz so this is another uh, thing if you want to support 40 megahertz then this is the planning you have to do uh, and this is uh, these are the two options available channel width you have 20 megahertz and you have uh, 40 megahertz so uh, based on that requirement it will keep changing in the background so you can you can you can decide what you want to use uh, you can enable 20 bar 40 that means it can support up to 40 if you are getting a client who is capable of going uh, going with 40 megahertz it can do, uh, use that channel width if you are not capable enough to use that you can use the 20 megahertz so it's completely up to you so these are the two options available on uh, 2.4 now let's see how the same thing works on 5 gigahertz now as you can uh, see here i already disabled 2.4 gigahertz and we are going to do a planning on uh, 5 gigahertz when we talk about uh, 5 gigahertz you have a lot of options so the first option is again i will go to the channel planner to showcase this one before we get into channel planning you should understand what are the channels available in the uh, 5 gigahertz right so uh, the first one is uh, uni1 so when you say UNI1, we are having 36, 40, 44, uh, 48. Then uh, second one, UNI2, then we have 52, 56, 60, and 64. And UNI2 um, extended, uh, you have uh, all these channels available based on the regulated domain, it will change. In case of uh, US, you will get uh, most of them, but in UK, you will get half of them. And based on your regulatory domain, it will change. Sometimes this extended itself is not available for you to use. Then uh, you have a UNI3, and uh, these are the channels available, 149 to 165. And these are the channels available. So I'm going with a standard uh, model, 20 megahertz, with uh, all these channels available. Uh, so you have to choose uh, only those channels that is available for your, uh, your regulated domain and I'm going to create a plan for that. So when I start that plan, the static mapping will change and you can see all these non-overlapping channels are coming into picture. So no issues, all are having different different channels and no issues. As you can see here, uh, this one is 48, 161, 149, 40, 56. So this is the same thing happens when you enable RRM right so that that is going to work in the same manner now this is functioning with the 20 megahertz now you let's see how this is going to change with uh, 40 megahertz right so channel planning uh, with 40 uh, 40 megahertz so i'm going to go for edit radio then as you can see here this is selected as 11 ac and 48 is the channel but now i'm going to change this to 40 megahertz when you say 40, you can see uh, when I select uh, 36, you can see that 36 and 40 done a, a channel bonding in the background and both these channels will be used in the background. 36 will be the primary channel and 40 will be the secondary channel. It will, it will support your network using 40 megahertz. So this is the another option available on your, uh, in your uh, network. So I'll, I'll explain you what is the throughput difference going to come uh, with this 40 megahertz and what are the uh, pattern change happens in the background and all. But uh, I just want to uh, show you that, okay, these are the available options uh, in uh, 40 megahertz. So, okay, so I'm going to take 136 and you can see 136 and 32 is got bundled. So this is 40 megahertz. Now let's see uh, what happens with uh, 80 megahertz. So I'm going to select 80 here. Then when you select 80 megahertz, you can see that now it started bundling four channels. So this is kind of four channel planning happening here. Uh, four channel planning is happening uh, with uh, one, uh, 80 uh, megahertz. Now let's see what happens with 160. So when you say 160, here you already taken UNI 1 and 2 completely. If you go to this guy, you are going to take uh, UNI extended, these channels are already taken. So you can see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 channels are already uh, used in the background. And if you are selecting 149, it's actually uh, downgrading into 4 channel plan because uh, there is no channels available for using in 160 uh, uh, channel width. So it's actually downgraded into 80 megahertz in uh, UNI 3. 
So when you say uh, 160, 160 megahertz, you have only two channel options. So that is uh, first one with the UNI 1 and uh, 2. Then second one is UNI extended. If you don't have UNI extended, you can't even use that 160. You can either go for this, this section, UNI 1 plus 2, or you can go with uh, UNI 2 extended, or you can have only one option because maybe your regulated domain don't allow your, you to use the uh, UNI 2 extension, then you are you are left with only one option. In 160, the entire channels available in the list is in use, so you are done. Let me let me show you the same thing in a different manner. So you uh, just imagine your regulated domain allows only UNI 1 and UNI 2. When you have UNI 1 and 2, you have total 8 channels available. And you can have individual 20 megahertz channels, non-overlapping channels like this. And your channel plan can, uh, channel plan can have uh, uh, 8 different channels running on all the APs and you are uh, good with that. If you want to get uh, better throughput and all those things that is a, a critical scenario in your network then you can think about enabling 40 megahertz. So what will happen is uh, these 36 and 40 will get bundled, 44 and 48 will get bundled, uh, 52 and 56 it will get bundled, then uh, this one will get bundled. So in this scenario you are going to have only 4 channels. When you go for 80, this UNI UNI1 will use all these four channels and that will be your one channel uh, channel. Then UNI2 will use another uh, four into one bundle. Then it will be using only two channels. So now you ended up in having two channel plans in your 40, uh, 80 megahertz. Now you ended up in uh, having uh, 5 gigahertz running like a two channel plan in your network. So all the access points will be running only two channels. Uh, so overlapping chances are really high and the uh, interference will come and all those issues will come into picture if you are not planning this one properly. When you choose 160, uh, what is going to happen is all these UNI 1 and 2 will get bundled into one channel plan and that will be the only option. So for an example, uh, you have only available channel list like this, your regulated domain allows only UNI 1, 2 and 3, there is no 2 extended, then you have only 3 options here. But out of this, only this guy can utilize that 160 channel width. So there is no bundling happening from UNI2 to UNI3. So what will happen is um, this 160, you will end up in having all the APs running with all the channels and interference will be too high and your performance uh, will be unpredictable how, how it's going to work. So 160, personally, I never seen anyone actually using 160. But I've seen um, some scenarios that uh, they choose the best option and somehow it's gone into 160 uh, channel width. So in the RRM uh, configuration of WLC, you have uh, DCA configuration. In DCA configuration, if you choose the best option instead of 20, 40, 80 or 160, if you choose the best available option, sometimes I've seen access points are actually functioning with 160. And that can lead into uh, multiple issues in the background. So these are the these are the things you have to consider when you are doing the uh, channel planning. You you should not think that okay I am leaving this to RRM. Like uh, Cisco is having the uh, feature called as RRM. I am just trusting that and I am just giving it to them. But one thing you have to keep it in mind is uh, RRM is as good as the values you are feeding into the system, right? Till now I was referring with the uh, Akahu tool, the same thing how this one is reflecting on the WLC side, right? So this is again 5520 WLC with uh, 8.8 code in the background. So whatever I was referring to uh, is again this DCA channels. You can see all these channels are available here. You can choose whatever you want. Uh, then uh, you can choose what is the megahertz you want to use, the channel width. You have option of 20 megahertz, 40 megahertz. 80 megahertz, 160 and best. So I was referring to this guy, the best option. So when you select best, uh, you should know what is happening in the background. So when you set be best, maybe it will go and start working with 160 megahertz based on the number of APs and number of um, uh, APs listened in the NDP packets or the neighboring packets. So uh, based on that, it will take a call. So by default, uh, you will get UNI 1 and 2, uh, then uh, based on your country configuration, 
then I'm going to enable you can you can see these channels but it's not enabled because uh, I didn't enable this UNI to extended channels so I'm enabling that then I have 149 53 and uh, these are the two channels available only for India so we have 69 and 73 so these are the total number of channels available for you and it's completely depends on what is the channel width you are going to set right when you have 20 megahertz each uh, each one of these channels will be non overlapping channels you have a number of channels available total number of channels are uh, this many when you choose 40 megahertz you are actually reducing this by half like you are actually uh, cutting the number of channel available right uh, like 3640 will be one session uh, one channel 4448 you will have primary channel and uh, secondary channel then when you go to 80 now the bundling is going to happen with uh, four channels like this when you uh, when you set 160 and uh, uh, uni2 is not available completely the 12 channels are not available then you don't have extended channels uh, of india that means you you got eight channels here that's the only available option because here there is no eight channels to bundle it and uh, function with 160 so it will not function with 160 uh, megahertz in your network so ultimately all the aps will be functioning with that channel so that that is something you don't need and again i stress on this point if you don't know how is functioning in the background with the one, uh, best available option uh you should not use that you should be going with uh, something lower than the best or 160 uh, based on your network so i just wanted to show you how this one uh, works in the background in uh, WLC. whatever we explain in this one is replicated uh, in this way in uh, uh, 5520 or uh, cisco air or WLC. so if you know how it uh, functions in the background you can do the channel planning in the proper way and that will uh, lead into a good uh, uh, wireless performance in your network hope this one will help you to understand the channel planning and uh, how to do that in the right way in your network and uh, it will help you uh, in getting uh, better wireless wireless performance in your network uh, see you in next video thank you for watching